BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, Studio C. I'll get over that one day. We'll be back there soon enough. Presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. I am Jerem Jordan. It is Monday, August 22nd. Great to have you. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with a guy who's ditching his fur coat for a rain jacket, perhaps, live from East Rutherford, New Jersey. MetLife Stadium, home of the New York football Giants and Jets. He is Spencer Lint. Jerem, it's great to be with you uh, from Studio B, Studio C, whatever it is. And yes, for the first time ever, MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. In fact, the weather held off just in time for us <laughs> to set up this live shot. And then the rain began right as we go live. Perfect timing for this, right? Meteorologist Spencer Linton is in the house. Uh, give us the weather conditions and please include barometric pressure. <laughs> I believe the barometer is at a 29.87. Okay, I have no Whatever idea what means. the barometer yeah. is right now. Yeah. But uh, it's supposed to rain on and off all day. Uh, we're hoping that it clears, obviously, by the time the Falcons and Jets kick off tonight. And I'm here specifically to catch up with you know, the likes of Kai Nakua and the Jets. Tyler Algiers running for the Falcons. And just maybe, just maybe Zach Wilson makes an appearance. Uh, we know that his surgery was successful. He's back with the team at practice. Uh, obviously, he's uh, hampered for a little while longer before he can get back on the field. But just maybe Zach makes an appearance tonight. And hopefully, they'll cross paths with him, too. But uh, kind of a cool venture for us doing a live show before an NFL preseason game. We've never tried this before. Yeah. And so why not start now? And why not do it in the pouring rain? All that Big 12 money is flowing in early, I guess. Uh, how much would I have to pay you to wear a fur coat like Joe Namath to the game tonight? Not much. You just have to buy the fur coat. Just you buy the fur coat and I'll wear it. You don't have to pay me on anything on top of that. How do you spell Amazon.com? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get to, <laughs> we'll get to that coming up. Okay, here's the show lineup. Bill Connolly of ESPN puts up some interesting numbers on several BYU opponents that make us wonder if there are more winnable games among the big four on the schedule. We'll talk about it. Who's the second best Cougar in the NFL? Fred Warner, clearly number one. We'll talk about that. Uh, Spencer's one-on-one -on -one with underrated cornerback Caleb Hayes after the scrimmage on Saturday. Plus, Cosmo dives into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. He's the best. And the alternate jersey ideas from Hunter Miller that we are drooling over right now, and we'll tell you which one we love the most. But let's cook us up some uh, Dunkin' Donuts version on a Monday of New Jersey edition of Headlines. Let's start with BYU football holding another scrimmage, their second of training camp to this point of uh, Camp Kalani in year seven under Coach Satake. With focus on establishing more depth specifically at the number two and number three spots, Coach Satake says the team, frankly, gave them some good looks. We had a good look at some guys with their able to tackle and block and had some quarterbacks go live, and so that, that was a good look for our, our defense and our, our offense, and especially for the quarterbacks. But Overall, I, I think we have had a good look from our guys at Fundamentals of Football. And then on Tuesday, we'll have another opportunity to do that again and um, and then have a, a game type of environment and then finish it out, uh, camp up, and, and focus completely on, on South Florida. One final scrimmage tomorrow before the focus turns completely to USF and that showdown at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. It's the Jets and Falcons on Monday Night Football tonight on ESPN at 8 Eastern. As Spencer mentioned, he's at the game. Exciting to uh, have some coverage there coming up uh, on social media, at BYU Sports Nation, of course, and tomorrow on the show. Kind of cool against Tyler Algier for the Cougs, repping in the NFL. How about the other Cougs in the NFL over the weekend? Jerem, led off by Samson Nakua with the Indianapolis Colts. He had a touchdown catch hey. and celebrated like Nakua does in the end zone. And that loss to the Detroit Lions, I love Jamal Williams saying, I was happy and frustrated at the same time because he scored against my team, but I always like to see my guys represent in the league. Dax Milne had four catches for 27 yards. Also saw him in on a punt return for nine yards and a commander's loss to Zane Anderson and the Kansas City Chiefs. Anderson had two tackles in that win over the commanders. Taysom Hill had one catch for 10 yards over the weekend. And Chris Wilcox, also with the Colts, had five tackles, rather, sorry, uh, Wilcox had five tackles uh, uh, for the Indianapolis Colts as well. So, hey, some guys doing some work, Jaron, for sure, across the league. 
Yeah, we'll see who makes all the cuts. Uh, should be a big number, perhaps the biggest number for BYU we've seen in quite some time uh, in terms of making the team, not the cuts. Uh, number 10, women's volleyball played its blue and white scrimmage on Saturday. The teams mixed it up by set. Erin Livingston led the way with 20 kills. By the way, she's playing at a really high level right now. I'm very excited to watch her play this season. Heather Knighting had 14 kills in the middle for the Cougars, who begin the season Friday with a doubleheader Friday against Ryder on the BYU TV app and then against Duke on BYU TV as well that night. A shout out to some more ladies representing the Cougars as well in the National Women's Soccer League, specifically Michaela Clough played 32 minutes in her game for the Orlando Pride. One shot on goal against Cameron Tucker and Gotham FC. Always kind of fun to see those former Cougars match up against each other in the pro leagues. You're not too far away from Gotham FC. They're in uh, the metropolis, right? And Jackson Clough got a hit in the walk for the AA Harrisburg Senators in a loss Friday to the Altoona Curve. You've got to love minor league, man. They're the best. All rise and shout. <laughs> it's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Okay, topic one. Expectations are built on high on program standards, personnel, schedule, etc. In this case, ESPN's Bill Connolly has his SP Plus, an advanced metric that takes into account tempo, opponent-adjusted efficiency, right? Connolly has a few surprising numbers over the weekend in his final SP Plus projections for the college football season. Notably, BYU 25th at 8.4 expected wins. That's higher than we've seen from most places. Notre Dame at 9.4, Oregon at 8.5, and then it gets fun. Baylor 7.6, Arkansas 7.0 wins. Spencer, do any of these numbers change your expectations versus those big four power five teams on the schedule? A little bit, and I think I'm with Bill Connolly. In he specifically pointed out a couple of teams that the pollsters really like early: Oregon and Baylor. And he said, "Look, the numbers with SP Plus just don't add up with the pollsters liking those teams a lot." And again, to Bill's credit, he points out it's not a specific science; it's just based a lot on like returning production and like what that production did for you last year, and how many games you won a year ago, and how you stack up against your approaching schedule. So. It's not the perfect metric, but I like the metric a lot. And so when I saw that Baylor is only projected to win seven and a half games and Arkansas at seven, and then Oregon right there with BYU, my initial thought was, man, are we putting too much stock into the schedule being too tough for BYU? Like, is nine and three really that much of a stretch for a BYU team that in the SP Plus projections returned the most of any team? I mean, I mean BYU's at the top of that list in returning production. So... Uh, with that being said, and then looking at the numbers that are a little bit lower for Oregon and Baylor and Arkansas specifically, hey, just make, and keep in mind, BYU has Baylor and Arkansas in Provo. Those teams got to make the trip to Provo. So uh, typically that is about a field goal advantage when you look at the history of those games and how it works out with, with teams being favored and odds. So, yeah, it just it made me feel a little bit better about you know, doubling down on the fact that I think BYU is going to win nine regular season games. Like nine and three, according to SP Plus, does not feel like that much of a reach at all. And so it just kind of made me feel like, yeah, going back to the roots of this, we know this BYU team is good. We know they return a ton of talent. And they do have the luxury of welcoming Arkansas after the Razorbacks go through a brutal stretch on the road in mid-October. And then they get Baylor for an emotional home opener, which is going to be a huge vengeance match. Uh, if those teams, you know, like Connolly's numbers say, lost a lot and they're not projected to win as many games as we thought, then I'm feeling better about those for sure. So it just, it just made me feel more confident, more comfortable in our 9-3 and three projection. 100%. The fact that Baylor and Arkansas are projected to win fewer than eight games. Listen, if that actually plays out, Gary needs to win those games. Because, yes, we agree that 9-plus is a reality for this team. Now... You need Jaron Hall to stay healthy. You need to have the right people playing all year. Like last year, if Tyler Algier doesn't play every game, BYU does not win 10. Um, BYU still won 10 despite Jaron Hall getting hurt. You needed Baylor Romney, right? You needed Jacob Conover to at least come in and hand off to Tyler Algier uh, when you get down to the third string against Utah State. So if that actually happens, yes, 10's even in play because Notre Dame at 9.4, Rarely does BYU beat a Power 5 team away from Provo in that situation. Well, hey, they did it against Miami. It, wasn't in, it was not in Provo. It wasn't on the road. Like, that is a 
That would be one of the most monumental wins ever if Notre Dame's like a 10 plus win team. It's just <laughs> tough to beat good teams away from Provo. It's tough to beat them at home. But at Oregon versus Baylor, Arkansas, these are winnable games. At Oregon's a tough game. They're expected to be good. Uh, and if we're going off this single metric, right, things change. Teams aren't as good as you think. You don't see 4 and 9 in 2017. You don't see 10 and 3 in 2021. Like, that's the fun part of actually playing it out. And like you said about Arkansas, okay, Baylor, BYU is super healthy coming out of South Florida, we hope, right? You're good to go in the Vengeance game. It's the home opener. BYU needs to win that game. Notre Dame's a tough one, right? Sure. When, when you look at Arkansas, and you've talked about this and brought this up, I'm, I'm uh, excited that they play Texas State and was ranked sixth. Alabama was first. Mississippi <laughs> State's tough. Then BYU. Then they have a bye, right? Arkansas is going to be toast. But so will BYU to some degree. I think BYU is going to be bruised and battered quite a bit going into the, what, the seventh game of the season, uh, the first game of the second half against Arkansas, after Notre Dame. I, I'm a little leery of the game after the game, if you will, for BYU. But you look at uh, who they have to play, what's coming back, where it's being played. Yes, get Baylor and Arkansas, and then if you can get Oregon and go 3-1 and one in those, we're hoping for a 2-2 two -two split, man. If you get the 2-2 two -two split... Nine and three plus. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just take care of the home games. And I, the SP numbers make me feel better about that, certainly. And then looking at Stanford way down the list. Oh, yeah. Them. Stanford's only picked to win like 4.6. I mean, the, so the SP numbers do not like Stanford at all. They're projected to win four and a half, maybe five games. I know, last game of the season, it's hard to know what a team's actually going to be. Maybe Stanford's quarterback, Tanner McKee, who BYU fans are well aware of, takes a big step forward and they're in bowl contention or they're battling for bowl contention. That's always a weird game potentially, but Stanford's way down. If BYU can go 3-2 and two against those five power fives and just hold serve at home against Baylor and Arkansas, yeah, that would be epic. And to your point about BYU going to Las Vegas and beating Notre Dame, yeah, that, that would be the equivalent of 2009 Max Hall, Dennis Pitta going to Jerry's World in Dallas and beating number three Oklahoma. That's what it would be, right? We would talk yes. about that forever. If BYU beat Notre Dame, it would be just like that game in 2009 when BYU beat Oklahoma. It, it is of that level as long as Notre Dame maintains their national prestige and their national ranking to that point, which we think they'll it, do. That won't matter. That won't matter. If Notre Dame goes 6-6, six and six, we don't care. We won't care. Like Oklahoma went eight and five and oh nine. We don't care because Colby Clawson sent that team into a spiral. By the way, Landry Jones comes in. He's a freshman. Landry Jones is like top five in college football history in passing yards. Like he is an all timer, which is just crazy. This just in, by the way, your boy Jaron Hall is on the Manning Award watch list. The award given to the nation's top quarterback in the Let's country. Go. One of 30 QBs on the list. Nice work, Jim. Okay, topic Let's go. two. Let's go. Clearly, yes. Fred Warner is the best Cougar in the NFL. He's the only dude who's been all pro. He's considered best middle linebacker in the game by a lot of people. Lone Cougar in the NFL Network's top 100 players at number 47. So, who is the second best Cougar in the NFL, Spence? This is a loaded question, Jerem, and a couple of names immediately come to mind. I think just because of his versatility and everything that he can potentially do for a team, he's now a tight end, and speaking of Taysom Hill, but he started won a bunch of games as a quarterback. He's got a winning record as a starting quarterback with the New Orleans Saints, so it's probably Taysom Hill, but just for fun, I'm going to throw a couple of guys on the list that, that we should also consider. And, and one's way off the radar, but he's been starting and contributing on a really good defense for a while, and that's Michael Davis with the Los Angeles Chargers. Like, Michael Davis is the dark horse guy in this conversation. Uh, he's locking down some of the elite top receivers in the league, and he's making a case to be discussed as the second-best BYU player in the NFL. Kyle Van Noy's got two Super Bowl rings. He's at the tail end of his career, you would think. Uh, he's made his way to the Chargers. He's teamed up with Michael Davis. Uh, so he needs to be discussed as well. I would like it to be Zach Wilson. Like, we believe uh -huh. that Zach Wilson is going to take that, that ascension at some point. And frankly, for BYU fans and for BYU's program and for the Jets organization, they want that to happen too. We need to see Zach ascend to be that second best BYU player in the NFL behind you know who uh, the mastermind linebacker Fred Warner so we want Zach to get to that point wouldn't mind seeing Jamal Williams 
make an argument for that as well. But right now, I, th I think it's Taysom Hill. And then how about some love for Michael Davis and, and Kyle Van Noy, the Chargers? Tremendous players. And uh, Michael Davis, the guy that didn't even start his senior year at BYU, but has carved out this career in the NFL. Also, he has a cool story as being both uh, black and Mexican, right? When they played in Mexico City uh, a couple years ago, the Chargers Chiefs on a Monday Night Football game. The Daniel Sorensen finished off with a pick. Michael Davis featured prominently. He has a great story. Yeah, it, I, I like all those players you mentioned. And clearly, Fred's the best. If we're thinking players, if we're thinking coaches, it's probably Andy Reid. So uh, my question is, is Andy <laughs> Reid a better coach than Fred Warner as player? Like, probably by a hair, right? But if we're taking Andy out of this equation and what player it is, I agree with you, Taysom Hill. In fact, pro football focus from last year, I looked up the grades just to see where everyone compares. I don't agree with all these grades per se, but Taysom Hill, 75 by the way, he was an 88.7 in 2019, his most effective year in the NFL. Then Van Noy, then Jamal, okay. and then Sione. Okay? Michael Davis, uh, PFF was not high on Michael Davis last year, by the way, 54. He was 71.5 in 2018. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's Taysom Hill. Obviously, the allure and the prestige and the unique value of Taysom Hill is more interesting than almost anyone else. But Van Noy's still got it, and he's, he's got something to prove now. And when Kyle Van Noy has been sort of challenged and undervalued in any way, he has shown up. Remember, he has a, uh, a DUI in high school. He doesn't come to BYU right away. He still comes to the Cougars. Freshman little flashes, then he is a superstar after what could have totally derailed his life and his career. KVN can show up big. We hope Jamal's good, but you're right. The guy that needs to be even the best, I would argue, is Zach Wilson. It needs to be Zach. We need yes. Zach to be good. We need him to be the next NFL BYU guy that's really successful. He needs to take a step forward. Unfortunately, the meniscus tear sets him back a little bit. But we hope here in a couple of weeks he's going. And that the Jets, I'm so, I, I want the Jets to be good. They've struggled for so long. Can they pull a Bengals <laughs> from last year and take the ascent, right? You know. Come on. Come on. Our question of the day. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm with you. Who's the second best BYU Cougar in the NFL? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At BYU Pros on Twitter, you can weigh in on Facebook and Instagram as well. This question has a few different answers, in my opinion. Best right now, Jamal Williams. A lot of momentum with hard knocks going on with the Lions, right? Best at any point in career, Kyle Van Noy. Ooh, I would argue Fred has still had a better, in terms of being all pro, KVN has done some amazing things. Obviously, winning two Super Bowls is awesome. But, uh, yeah, if Fred's on the Patriots, he wins two Super Bowls as well. Maybe three. Uh, and and uh, highest potential, Zach Wilson or Tyler Algier or Brady okay. Christensen. Is yes. Brady going to be the second best player as an O-lineman for the Panthers? Yeah, lo I love the idea of Brady Christensen getting some love. It's just hard as an offensive lineman to be that elite that we're like, yeah, you're clearly the second best yeah. BYU player because of the position that he plays. Like, it, that's just tougher. It's not a skill position. It's not as highly visible. And so that's a tough row. But I love the I love the idea that Brady Christensen's getting some respect there. We're doing right, that Jared, with this year's team, rolling. by the way, with Blake Freeland. We're saying he's like the In, second best guy on the indeed. team, maybe, right? Yeah. Let's. I'm all, I'm all for it. Send me lots of BYU guys and put them in the NFL on the offensive line specifically. That means great things for BYU. Okay, coming up, why there is no doubt, as if there were any doubt before, that Cosmo is the greatest mascot in the entire world. It crushes Willie the wave of Pepperdine. And perhaps the most underrated defender on the team, <laughs> Caleb Hayes, goes one-on-one -on -one with Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation from Provo and East Rutherford, New Jersey. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork.
Accidents don't just happen nine to five, they happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour, really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always, and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. It's my senior year, but I still have so much to do. <laughs> Doing what's right isn't always easy. You can't let this injustice stand. I'm not you, Polly. You bought a factory. We're supposed to make these decisions together. I have no idea what your future holds, but I believe that you can change the world. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tomorrow on After Further Review, Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, and David Nixon look at some of the key returners for BYU football, including Keenan Peely, Lopini Katoa, Tyler Batty, and more. Watch tomorrow, 7 Eastern, on the BYU TV app. How about that grab and that graphic? Just using every ounce of space, which Lopini Katoa also needed to make that catch in the Boca Raton Bowl in 2020. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Great to have you from East Rutherford, New Jersey and MetLife where the Jets will take on the Falcons tonight. Kai Nakua, Zach Wilson on the sideline, and the Jets against Tyler Algier and the Falcons. Spencer Linton's there. I am Jerem Jordan. And uh, great to have you here because uh, on Saturday, BYU held a scrimmage, Spence, and you talked to perhaps the most underrated defender on BYU's team, Caleb Hayes. Yeah, and, and we've talked a lot about Michael Davis, who was an underrated defender at BYU, certainly. Did not star, obviously, but, yeah, had, had a chance to speak with Caleb after that scrimmage and just really, really enjoyed how open and how uh, clear and, and uh, the way that he presented himself. I just love how honest he was about his position with BYU and what the school means to him. Here's my interview with Caleb Hayes. Caleb, you are two weeks away from the first game of the season, and you start in Tampa at USF. What are your emotions like at this point of camp, knowing that you're so close to an actual game? You know, uh, I've been waiting for, you know, USF, you know, get the season started, you know, after UAB, like, you know, after that whole season, it was like, uh, I was already ready. You know, I can go again. And, uh, you know, it was a, it's been a long off season, you know, going to this fall camp, you know, it's exciting. The boys are excited. Uh, there's a lot of energy and practice, you know, um, a lot of learning and uh, just loving each other up. So uh, we're all excited. I'm definitely excited. Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a word I can't even, uh, even express. Now, you mentioned the UAB game, and uh, in speaking with many of your coaches, they talked about what a learning uh, experience that was for you, a very difficult learning experience. But how did that shape what you did in the offseason and how you approached training camp? I would say, you know, like always staying humble and uh, hungry uh, when you have like, you know, certain games like that and everything like that. Uh, I was just very blessed to even be in Shreveport uh, and be able to play the game because it was in front of my family. They lived in uh, Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. They were born and raised there. So, you know, just the excitement from, you know, going off in that game and just seeing like, you know what, uh, this season can't even be better than last season. Um, and I feel like, you know, the expectations is there, but, it, you know, it comes within us. You know, we haven't earned uh, anything yet. So, you know, we just, I'm excited. Like I just keep saying, man, that's, a, that's, that's probably the perfect word. And um, I'm very optimistic going in this season. What is it that's making you so optimistic that this season, in spite of a perceptibly tougher schedule than last year, that this season can be better than last season? We, we got guys. Uh, we got guys. and. Uh, I've never felt so just at home, like with a program before. And like, you know, just going into the season, like, you know, everybody just so just bought in. And it's like, you know, this it's it's a family environment where it's just like, you know, like I got your back, no matter uh ups and downs, like, you know, this adversity, we're gonna get through this. So uh yeah. 
As you look back on what you've accomplished at BYU and what you still want to accomplish, what's atop the goal list still for you, both individually and as a team? I want to win. Uh, I think the boys want to win. I think the coaches want to win. I don't think this whole community wants to win. Uh, that's one and foremost. Uh, I want to make my family proud. Uh, I want to. I want them to know, like you know, I'm out there for them, and I'm out there to show and prove that I can be able to provide and uh, able to, you know, bring out happy faces to the community. You know, uh, you know, joy and the love of football. Um, I want to work on individually myself, like, you know, just keep playing consistent, uh, become the best, you know, one of the best DBs at BYU history. Uh, I want to have, I have so many goals. I could just list off to you. I want to catch my first pick. I want to, uh, you know, get pick six. It's so much stuff that I want to bring into this game for this team in order for us to win, because I cannot be great unless they're great. You feel me? I, so I need them to, uh, you know, help me out as well. You know, when I'm down, I need them to bring me back up. And, you know, they, I hope they can see me, like I can bring that out of them as well. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is going to be a great season for, uh, for a lot of us. And, you know, hopefully for me, it's going to be uh, one of the best years of my college career. Hey, here's to a pick six, my friend, for sure. Caleb yes, Hayes sir. is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we've seen some pretty eye-popping stats from you personally that have come out from some next-level metric services about your ability to cover downfield. And um, you don't give up many big plays, really, if at all. I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking about any big play that you've given up ever at BYU, and that's a credit to you. Uh, what is it that you're doing to make yourself better in that regard specifically? Like, walk us through uh, your mindset and your mentality of what you're doing as a defensive back to – you know, put up those type of stats and, you know, in a way, create your own Caleb Hayes Island, like Revis Island back in the day. Uh, I would say, like, you know, I'm very greedy uh, when it comes to the football. So if I can't pick it, hey, you're not going to pick it as well. But, like, you know, I like uh, – I don't like giving up. It just feels bad. It makes me feel bad. It makes me – can't sleep at night. Uh, you know, even if you catch a little pass, I'm going to think about it, and I'm going to watch that film over and over again. Um, you know, and to fix my uh, mistakes, I can correct those. Uh, and then, you know, just playing within the defense, you know, coaches call great defenses. So, you know, I just play within it, you know, to know my keys and uh, my P's and Q's and know who I need to look at, uh, know where their tendencies are, what they like to give up. And then like, you know, what they uh, explosive plays is. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm just trying to be a guy to just provide on the defense. So, and uh, in order for that, I got to eliminate those explosive plays. I got to play with them. I got to trust my safeties. I got to trust my linebackers, my D-line to get their job done so I can get my job done as well. You obviously are very, very hard on yourself and uh, meticulous in your preparation. So where do you feel like with that preparation, you have improved the most from last season to where you are right now today? I'll say like I train ridiculously. Uh, <laughs> like it, it and Training, you know, people think like in our just backpedal, like, you know, go off and no, I take time and I break things down. I like some days, you know, I work on my press. I do my uh, square technique. Shout out to Anthony Brown, ground zero. Uh, I, uh, you know, I work on my transitions. I I, I try to uh, simulate zone uh, defenses where I can just, you know, know where my eyes need to be at uh, or you know, I just even watch film and everything like that. Like, you know, like ridiculously, you know, <laughs> I, I think I watch more film, um, film than TV sometimes, you know, like that just, <laughs> that is what it is. But, you know, even that, you know, I just try to take care of my body, uh, rehab, stretch, uh, do the little things, you know, uh, for in order for me to be great, to prepare on the field and, uh, you know, showcase my skills and talents. Now, Caleb, I'm looking at this BYU secondary and I'm seeing some guys, like you said, we got, you said, we got dudes. Yeah, you do. I mean, between you and Gabe Judy Lally and D'Angelo Mandel and Malik Moore, and I'm not going to list them all because it, the list is very long, but what is it about the secondary that you like the most right now? What BYU has in the past defense? Uh, I've been here for, I guess you could say you're going on my second, but we're very close though. Uh, it's a very close group, and I feel like we just talk about 
a lot of things and just talk about, you know, just, you know, our goals and aspirations. Um, and, you know, we, in those transition into on the field, cause you know, now it was like, we have a better communication and like, you know, we can figure some things out. You know, these are uh, very talented guys, very experienced dudes. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to be great just, you know, just playing with them. I feel like, you know, we're, our IQs are getting higher. Uh, we're playing within ourselves and like believing, you know, we can do certain things because like, okay, I know his weaknesses, I know his strengths. So how can I play off of that? You know, uh, yeah, this DB group, I feel like it's going to, it's also, I feel like it's at least, at least top three, top two, honestly, <laughs> top one DB groups at BYU, you Let's know? Go. Uh, and, you know, and, but at the same time, you know, fellas, um, like I said, we haven't proved anything. You know, I can I can, I can go off and on and on how much we we're we're going to be great and all that, but like you know, it hasn't we haven't hit like you know uh, the field yet. You know, we're not at USF right now to really showcase that. But all we can say, you know, just trust in the process. And you know, uh, like a saying that it's kind of in my head now. I understand it's going to be a movie. Okay, I can't wait to watch how that movie unfolds, Caleb. Um, while we're talking about your teammates, who's the most competitive guy in the defensive back group? I am. I'm glad okay. that, uh, besides <laughs> me, besides me, um, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. They all, they all just want a piece of the pie. It's uh, it's great. It's so awesome. Cause like, you know, it's like every day is like, ah, uh, is he going to one up on me? You know, uh, you know, there was a competition. Who's going to get the first pick of the, um, um, fall camp. And then also in game, you know, uh, I got one. So <laughs> I got one. So, uh, no way I was going. So, you know, uh, hopefully he just keeps on striding. We were just talking about that yesterday. Like, you know, who's going to get the first pick, uh, who's going to make the most plays, you know? So everybody gave Judy, D'Lo, Jacob, uh, Robinson, Jacob Boren. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we now we got Maury Bamba. Um, who else we got? To even the freshmen, KG, Zion, all of them. You know, they all uh, is contributing in a way. Where it's like, uh, I can't let him one up me just because you know the room <laughs> is just that tight. You know, and then Coach G as well kind of uh, you know sparked that flame within the room. So it's kind of <laughs> it, it gets great and it gets competitive. And you know, there's a lot of smack talk, but yeah. Yeah, you know the real answer. You know the real answer. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. You go back just the first thing you said. It's me. I'm, I'm the guy. Uh, who do you enjoy defending against the most in practice among your teammates? Which wide receiver do you look across on? You're like, yeah, let's go. I'm I'm digging this. <laughs> all of hey, uh, all of them got their um, talents, their um, strengths, and like you know, I have to always play differently with um, with each wide receiver. Uh, However, you know, I'll have to give it up to uh, Puka, Gunner, and Cosper, uh, and Keanu, like one of those top four, probably in that order. Uh, like just because, like, you know, they're a little bit more experienced. Uh, they know how to, uh, you know, move well, you know, play within their offense and with their game. So uh, I feel like they watch a lot of film of me, you know, just had to one up on me. So uh, I just like that. And, you know, uh, I just feel like, you know, I always feel like I have a target on my back. So, uh, I'm always going when I when I'm always against those guys. I feel like okay, I have to play a hundred percent honest and a hundred percent uh uh hundred uh, percent. How you say it? Ah, oh, got tight. I got uh, tongue tied. It's okay. Go hundred percent out yeah. on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's all in, right? You, yeah, you got to be yeah. you got to be fully invested the whole time. Yes, sir. All right, Caleb. Uh, a couple more quick hitters before we wrap up. Um, your BYU experience, how would you sum it up? Uh, and, and maybe more specifically, how has the BYU experience been different for you than maybe what you expected it to be when you first transferred to BYU? No, I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. You know, just coming from a different background, coming from Oregon State, uh, it's a big difference, you know, um, coming in, you know, before I try to, uh, you know, silent commit, you know, just uh, – just try to you know, stay low, just like work on me and everything like that. But, you know, coming in and actually being on campus, I feel like there's a lot of uh, stereotypes and stigmas where people don't understand. Like it's different when you actually be here and like 
it's a really a safe and uh, productive environment because like you're here and you you're here for the right reasons. You know, you're going, you're going to be here for the right reasons. And this school, this football, uh, these programs is going to help you with through life. And I feel like people's got to start uh, understanding, like, you know, uh, new recruits or whatever, understand like, this place is really for us, you know, it's for, it's for the students. It's for the student athletes. Um, I'm a grad transfer, so I don't really be up on campus and everything like that, but just hearing from the guys and everything, like it's, it's, a uh, it's nice that they really care. And like, you know, once you get that degree, it's like, Oh, you graduated from BYU. Oh, now you're locked in your family. Um, so like, you know, this, this environment is just uh, well put, you know, it's very, um, it is, it's the history. It kind of makes it, uh, kind of makes it special, you know, for a guy like me to be here. And like, you know, the, the environment is cool. You know, the people is uh, chill and everything like that. Uh, <laughs> like, there's it's a lot to do, like, to be completely honest with you. And uh, yeah, man, everybody's just so family welcomed. And it's just, you know, it makes you feel just homey. You know, for sure. I can follow. All right, Caleb, uh, last one here. How close to game ready is this BYU football team? And if you're not already there, what has to happen for you to be game ready for USF in a couple of weeks? So me or the team? You can answer both individually and for the whole team. All right. So for me, I start off for me. Uh, I got to just keep on watching and keep on just understand you know they have a they have a new office coordinator uh so you know things can change every year and then and then you can also take account like you know that's a whole brand new team so like they're i feel like they're going to be really great uh next year um i expect nothing less from them so like you know my expectations for them is very high and i'm very excited and very privileged to uh play a team like that in tampa you know i've never been to florida but however mm-hmm. you know like just loving the environment over there um because they they showed very great sportsmanship uh at usf um so for me to in order to prepare myself is to uh not fear and like you know keep on doing whatever i got to do have confidence be game ready prepare and uh understand that i have a purpose this year you know i'm always kind of telling them like my teammates like my back's against the wall now you know there's no uh there's no hiding. I can't hide from this. You know, I have to just express and, you know, just love the game from here on out, you know, um, which I've already have been, but just, just keep loving this. And like, this is, this, my, this, this experience I'm going to have is, uh, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a great one. And hopefully my family members, um, everybody that supported me, uh, and helped me out through my, um, throughout my life can see how great I'm going to be. Uh, I hope I can, uh, you know, and I will project it on the field um, and show my teammates that, like, I will have y'all backs uh, and the coaches and all that. So it's just a sense of belief. I feel like for the team, let's keep on playing our football, you know. Um, there's nobody that can stop us except for us. You know, we kill ourselves. And um, we just have to just keep on just, just grinding and grinding because it's a day in day out they like it one percent better every day you know when we go out there we want to we can't be perfect however we want to play at least 90 percent football i got that from a wise man so if you ever heard that uh <laughs> i understand now um but just you know just keep on just coming at it because like you know uh, we have a long schedule we only have one bye week at the end of probably like after week 10 so it's going to be very heavy so everybody has to be locked in everybody has to understand like you know uh we're gonna it's it's all or nothing you know if we want to be great if we want to be top dudes if we want to be the top one of the top uh football programs uh in college football this year we all gotta do certain things to you know get better and that's just the little things taking care of ourselves uh loving each other uh showing love to the fans um to the opponents and you know, just play like just extraordinary football. You know, um, I'm just very. I just want to say, like, you know, I'm just very blessed to be here, and I do appreciate you know every one of 
my teammates, every one of you, you know, even yourself in this interview, you know, I'm very privileged. And uh, I can't, I can't express this enough. And it's, you know, the more I think about it and the more I, every day I <laughs> sleep, you know, about to go to bed, I just think about like, you know, this is, this is it. Like, this is, it has to be it. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate everything, man. You got it. He is energized. He is excited. He is Caleb Hayes of 25th ranked BYU. He's got a pick six in his radar and many more great things. Can't wait to watch you play against USF in Tampa, man. Congratulations on all you've accomplished before and uh, good luck the rest of the way, man. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma for the rest of camp. We'll see you in Tampa very soon. Yes, sir. I love y'all, baby. Let's get right. Go Cougs. What a great interview with Caleb Hayes. Spence, that was amazing. A few things that stuck out. He loves this cornerback group, thinks they could be one of the best in BYU history. I agree, they could be. Uh, he said, I'm greedy. If, if I'm not going to pick it, uh, you're not going to catch it. I train ridiculously. That was a fantastic interview. And obviously, <laughs> his conversation about being black, not being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but having a great experience here, which is what we hope the case is for everybody. Yes, there's a spot at BYU for everyone. Jeremy, you and I have had that conversation a lot. And Caleb Hayes is a perfect example of that as a guy who's not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and is a black athlete, but has really embraced what BYU can do for him. And uh, I, I just, I love to see it. All right, Jerem, uh, we have still things to do. And the sun is shining now in New Jersey. Hey! It's fantastic. The sun's come out. We got, we got stuff to do, including more discussion on who's the second best Cougar in the NFL right now. And BYU's not the number one stone cold sober school anymore? What? This is BYU Sports Nation, a fully caffeinated a dish. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. BYU Sports Nation, to interact with the show and get great content throughout today, follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He's Spencer in East Rutherford, New Jersey, where luckily it's not raining as much as it was. I'm Jeremy Jordan in Provo, ahead of the Jets-Falcons Monday Night Football exhibition game tonight in the preseason, but first, let's whip it. Cougar Whip Round is presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Jerem, let's go ahead and start with Baylor coach Dave Aranda, who spoke to the Waco Rotary Club last week and said the following, and I quote, <laughs> I love the league, Aranda said, Cincinnati coming in and Utah coming in. What? UCF and Houston. I, 
I just think that there's teams that fit the Big 12 mold, the culture, and I think the brands are going to be way stronger. Does Coach Aranda know something that we don't, Jaron, with his reference of Utah? No, he doesn't. That was an innocent mistake, but I would love to see Utah <laughs> in the Big 12 one day. I think that'd be fun to play the rivalry game every year. What do you think? Meaningful rivalry games in November always are the most fun. So yeah, I would love to see that happen at some point. Hunter Miller, shout out Hunter, put these BYU modern throwback uniform concepts together. Which one do you like the most? And I think I know, because you've mentioned it on the show before. Yeah, and I posted it all over Twitter last night too. The one on the far left with the royal blue, the black, the black drop shadow. Oh my goodness, I, yes. I love the one that Malik Moore is mocked up to wear. And I, I think it might be my favorite BYU football uniform ever. And I'm not talking about the all whites necessarily. I just like the white top with the royal numbers, yeah. the black drop shadow, because it screams 1996 and 14 wins in that season. It also screams SMU in the whack. Uh, yeah, th those were fun times. <laughs> I love that jersey. I also like the uh, the the all royal, uh, excuse me, all navy kind of just numerical helmet with Tyler Algier right there. I think that's fun too as a throwback. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and listen, I'll get back on Twitter a little bit more. I've had to take a break for a little while. Come on, you know, like I, Wait, I, I need to work a, on I my didn't social know you were on media game. I'll get on I'm this. Just kidding, I follow you. <laughs> Okay, uh, Jerem, moving on from the uniforms to the greatest mascot in the entire world ever. Cosmo's outdone himself again. He parachuted into <laughs> Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That's awesome. There were wet conditions. Look at stormy backdrop. Like, who does that? Cosmo does that. But how impressive was the landing as we watched that? I mean, that that's as good of a landing as, like, BYU had in 84 at the end of the season to go to number one. You know what I mean? Like, this is incredible. I think it's perhaps the most athletic thing he's ever done. We're very numb to the amazingness of Cosmo. Show me another mascot who would even attempt that. Like, that is unbelievable stuff from Cosmo. I love Cosmo <laughs> like I love my sisters. Viral dances, viral parachute jumping into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. The man, the mascot, he can do no wrong. Best mascot ever. Okay, it reminds us of 2017 Wisconsin. There was a parachuter who did not have this kind of landing in the middle of the field. In fact, he runs into the north end zone. Boom goes the dynamite. I mean, luckily this guy was okay, uh, but that was pretty gnarly. BYU got uh, their butts whooped that day and so did this guy. Yeah, that landing was certainly kind of indicative of how that whole game went for BYU. I'm pretty sure George but, uh, it shows went you, off like, at the same to, time. Yeah, you you do it in a mascot costume, like and land it like seen. Cosmo did. That's legit. Okay, that is, BYU, that's legit. BYU is no right. longer. This is shocking information here. Brace yourself. No longer the number one Stone Cold Silver School in America, but that's because the Princeton Review changed the name of the category to quote cancel the keg. And the Cougars are still on top. <laughs> Do you like the name change or the ranking better? You know what? Uh, what most people don't know is that, you know, while we're here for the Jets-Falcons game tonight, I actually came out to dispute this with the Princeton Review Journal. Princeton's in New Jersey. So <laughs> we're going to make a stop. We're going to have a formal picket line. We're going to have uh, a demonstration that BYU should still be the number one Stone Cold Silver school. But it's, I mean, it's fine. The name changes, but cancel the keg is hilarious. Just as long as BYU is atop whatever list it is, I'm okay with that. Yeah, okay, so we always celebrate with chocolate milk. So here we are. I will attempt to down the chair. Yes. Way. Bottoms up, my friend. Bottoms up. I'd join you if I could. It's the best chocolate milk in all the land. Now I want chocolate milk. Thanks, man. Super nice of you. You're gonna down the whole thing? That's, that's unbelievable. I can take one wow. breath during that. So, yeah. Wow. All right, coming up, Jerem, as you digest that chocolate milk, rise and shout out to several Cougars repping in the NFL currently and over the weekend. Boy, am I refreshed. Speaking of which, uh, who do you have as the second best Coug in the NFL? Is it Skylar Ridley? No, just kidding. It's <laughs> BYU Sports Day.
Quick Quack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red. Ooh, quarterback. Wide out. Rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. Loan discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Telehealth. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. When I was about your age, I was sent to stay with my grandpa. Come on. Hello, where did you come from? I have a good feeling about us. I think we're gonna be best mates. Dogs don't sleep in the house. Hello, Mick. Please, call me Betty. Miss, Mum. Just Betty. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 10th ranked BYU women's volleyball opens yeah. their season this weekend. Watch as the Cougars host Ryder Friday at 2 Eastern live on the BYU TV app. Jerem Jordan on the call. Ryder Broncos coming to town. The BYU Broncos, as we talked about last week. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Studio C in Provo in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Our question of the day, what's the, or who is the second best BYU Cougar in the NFL? At Sapporo Mochin on Twitter. Since the question is not exclusive to players, I'm going with the coaching route. As far as impact, Fred has to be number one. Okay. I would say Andy Reid trumps Taysom. I would argue that Andy Reid is the best if number we're one. including him, and then Fred would be number two. What do you think? Yes. Yeah, well, listen. Did Andy Reid win the Super Bowl against Fred Warner and the 49ers? No, yes, he his did. mustache Automatically. Did. Okay, his mustache won too. Fair <laughs> Maybe enough. Got a okay, cheeseburger. Multiple reasons why Andy Reid would be number one on that list. Yeah, didn't go to Italy for coffee and wine. He went there because he <laughs> likes to eat. Yeah, it's Andy Reid, true to himself, number one. He's like, I'm here for the Rococo architecture. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> at John Hatch on Instagram. In terms of value to their team, it has to be Zach Wilson. In terms of accomplishment in the NFL, okay. I'd go with KVN. Yeah, most accomplished by far is KVN. Had Fred Warner won a Super Bowl as the alpha on the defense? Like, KVN is tremendous. We love Kyle Van Noy. He wasn't the best player on the Patriots' defense, per se. But, uh, listen, it was Fred Warner and the Niners against the Chiefs. It was, we were going to win either way in this as BYU yeah. fans. But uh, we'll see if the Niners get back there at some point. We'll see how good Trey Lance is. Jimmy G just sitting there. Yeah. It's, it's going to take some time for sure. How, can Fred Warner lead his team as a defender to a Super Bowl championship? That, that would put him maybe back up atop the list, but time will tell. All right, Jerem, uh, it's, start, it's starting to pour again here. Oh, come on. Um, so why not, why not take a break right now so that we can move back under before we do our final seven? Jack Candy <laughs> once said. in an NFL stadium. Jack Candy yes. once said. Uh, it's probably crying because of something you did. And more of your responses coming up. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> if you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
Super Girls of Summer are back. What kind of friend are you looking for before school starts again? Kind. Creative. Honest. Fun. With so many good friends, you're sure to find one who speaks just to you. So make the connection before summer's over. Watch the Super Girls of Summer only on BYU TV or on the free app. So many times when we're on the road, things do not go as planned, right? We go in with like a plan A, B, C, D. In Costa Rica, I was on plan W with my kitchen, right? The plan is changing, it's getting bigger. This project continues to test me. It's not looking good. We cannot fail and we just have to keep going. I'm all smiles right now, this is great. Oh, we did it, guys. The fact that we finish, that is a miracle in itself. And that organization goes on to help so many people. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, who's the second best BYU Cougar in the NFL? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at CL underscore living. Oh, so this is why Zach's jersey number is number two? Yeah, we want Zach to be in that upper echelon of Cougars in the NFL. He's certainly got some work to do in coming off that meniscus tear. Uh, and we hope him, uh, he gets healthy. We're hoping to see him tonight. That's why you're there, right? Tyler Algier versus Zach and Kai, but best of uh, luck to Zach. Okay, uh, today's Rise of Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Shout out to BYU for being the uh, cancel the keg, number one. Um, tasting that milk still. <laughs> Cosmo for the amazing feat on Saturday, skydiving into the Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And Spencer, Cougars in the NFL. Obviously, you are there to watch them tonight, but Dax Mill and Zane Anderson took a pick as well over the weekend. It's awesome to see these guys at the next level. Never gets old when you see these pictures come out, uh, whether it be in the preseason, the regular season, or the playoffs. Like it's, it's nice to have 22 different guys either on rosters or competing for roster spots right now. Thanks to today's guest, Caleb Hayes. And, our, uh, Jerem, we do need to uh, remind everyone the conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did we have time for Dennis? No. For Spencer from New Jersey, I'm Jerem. Shout-out to Bracken L. Bakery. Go Cougs! In the NFL.